Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of crop and horticulture production. Uh, good day farmers, my name is Hank Saisai. I'm the technical advisor for crops and poultry within AgriBank's Agri-Advisory Services Division. Irrigation systems and how they are very important and effective in crop production. So when you have grown your vegetable seeds, you need to apply water at the spots where you have grown the seeds to ensure that they germinate and develop into a small plant. There are so many ways in which you can irrigate your crops. Irrigation is actually defined in simple terms as the artificial application of water to a prepared or cultivated piece of land to motivate crop production. So irrigation systems are an essential investment for any farmer who wants to be involved in crop production. And you can have a wide range of choices to choose from in terms of which system to use and how effective that system will be. For small scale farmers, there are certain irrigation systems that are recommended. The first one is the micro jet sprinkler irrigation system, like the ones that are right here next to me. These ones, they have rainfall effect in which they release water. So water drops from the top, from the top downwards in a very soft manner to ensure that the, the surface of the soil in which your crops are growing is moistened. And once the soil is moistened, the root systems of your crops start taking in the water, which contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other small trace elements to promote growth of your crops. There are certain advantages and certain disadvantages of each and every irrigation system I mean. Microjet irrigation systems, they are quite effective in areas where you don't have a lot of prevailing wind. But if you set them up in an area where there is a lot of prevailing wind, the direction from which the wind is blowing from receives less water and the direction where the wind is going will receive more water. So it influences the rate at which water is applied on a certain given area. So each microjet sprinkler system, the head itself has a radius that it should cover, but because of wind, there will be an area whereby less water is applied and more water is applied. And then when you irrigate crops, it's very important to understand that there are crucial times in the day where you are supposed to irrigate your crops. Early in the morning when it's cool, it's very good to do irrigation because there will be less evaporation and more absorption and infiltration. Late in the evening when it's cooler, the same principle applies. The soil is not that hot. Your crops have enough time in terms of infiltration and uh, absorption of the water from the soil. But if you irrigate when it's midday, when the temperatures are high, most of the water that you have applied using the irrigation system will be lost through evaporation. So you must know that the time of irrigation is crucial. And one aspect that you must know is that during summer, it's always recommended to irrigate two times a day, early in the morning and early in the evening. During winter, when it's slightly cooler, you can irrigate once in the morning or once in the evening. So apart from the microjet irrigation system, on the far end, I do have drip irrigation system. So drip irrigation system, it's one way of artificially applying water to your crops. And the good thing with drip is that the drip lines are designed in such a way that only certain spots on each drip line have the ability to release water. So they come spaced already. It can be 30 centimeters from each drip hole to the next hole. It can be 40 centimeters from each drip hole to the next hole. So the advantage is that you minimize or control weeds in an operation where you are using drip lines because only at openings on the drip line, that's where you grow crops and not every part of your seedbed gets wet. But in a case of the micro jets, the whole surface is covered and you start seeing over time some unwanted plants growing there. And that will now become labor intensive for you to be taking out all the unwanted crops from your green pepper seedbed, just to leave the crop that you desire to grow. On the other hand, drip irrigation has its own disadvantages. And one of its key disadvantages is that in most cases, the drip lines will end up being blocked. So it becomes labor intensive now to unblock all the drip lines manually. 
And when you are installing the drip lines, it's very important to ensure that when you connect them to the main pipe, you don't tie up the end of the drip line. So you flush them with water to take out all the soil that might have entered during the connections. And afterwards, you now tie the end to ensure that all the water is contained within the drip line. So apart from drip irrigation and microjet irrigation, some advanced farmers use uh, center pivots, these are irrigation systems on most commercial farms that produce on uh, more than 400, more than 100 hectares or more than 50 hectares of land to just produce crops. So these are automated systems that have a mechanism of six wheels that move the irrigation pivots in a clockwise manner. And then these systems can be set at an interval or a rate at which they must release water to match the rainfall effect. So these systems help you to release water with slow intensity for a prolonged period of time. So they extend the rate at which water is released and ensure that the area that comes into contact with that water is given enough time for that water to be absorbed by the soil and to ensure that after absorption, you can keep that water in the soil for as long as possible for crop absorption. The other irrigation system you can use is flooding irrigation system. So you just get a main pipe, you place it on your seedbed and then you open to flood that area and once you are satisfied you can remove it and go to the next seed block but the problem with this one is that if you oversupply too much water and it's not sand soil maybe you have clay soil the water takes a bit of time before it can drain or evaporate and that can suffocate your crops other irrigation systems that might not be common in namibia are faro irrigation system if you are next to a river channel you just make a a diversion ditch which brings in the water from the main river system and then you cut it open all over your seedbeds to allow water to be flowing inwards towards the seedbed and that is used for irrigation your, irrigating your crops. Last but not least we have the traditional way of irrigation whereby we make use of containers such as water buckets and uh, watering can. So you have to physically get the water in the bucket and then you evenly distribute it on the seedbed. So these are ways in which a farmer can irrigate and ensure that each and every day your crops have sufficient water. So in short, that is it about irrigation systems. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content.